Welcome to your freshman year at the Tragedy Academy, where you are the teacher and we are the students. And together, we will learn from past tragedy to lay the foundation for a better humanity. The only supplies you will need, an open mind and a sense of humor. So, tilt that chair back, talk at a turn, and never raise your hand. Because this is the Tragedy Academy and class is in session. Now I'm pure scholar. Welcome to the Tragedy Academy, a show created to bridge societal divides in a judgment-free zone using candor and humor. My name is Jay, and today I am joined by Sharon Green. How are you doing today, Sharon? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Sharon joins us uh, with some very interesting topics and things that she's been um, working through, journeying uh, through her life. And one of the things that I saw here is that uh, you're a Reiki master. Is that correct? Well, I'm a master of nothing, but I, I practice. Yeah. <laughs> you practice Reiki. So, yeah. uh, well, let's do this. What, what, what is it that, um, what passion is it that brought you here today? Uh, the awakening, the awakening. And it's not just my awakening. It's everyone awakening. It's um, everything being a part of a much bigger picture, you know, finding my place in that picture. So you you speak of an awakening um mm -hmm. something that, bigger than yourself can you mm -hmm. can you elaborate on that you know I mean, besides uh, like bacon and eggs and coffee you know that right. kind of awakening definitely it's one of those things where you kind of either have a huge break in your psyche or you just kind of wake up one day and say you know um i'm i'm going to let my mind expand and damn who thinks that it's wrong because it feels right to me yeah, I, um, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. Uh, the reason why I asked that, you know, twice is is um, I think that everybody can kind of see and feel that there's a difference um, in our dynamic emotionally, energetically. Um, you know, all of the all of the barriers have uh, have started to shift around. And I think that um, we put everybody kind of in a mental and spiritual crises. Mm -hmm. locking them up in their house for a year with nothing but their own issues and their family sitting there and you better figure it out. I, that's what I it. think. That's what I think. Exactly. It yeah. was a yeah. global existential crisis. Yeah. On purpose. Ah, on purpose. So who's that would, that would insinuate that there was something behind that. A lot of people believe that it's very much, um, you know, like conspiracy theory stuff, but it's on a universal level, it's it's a lot bigger than that. So I have been in astrology or interested in astrology for years. It started out with horoscopes, then it was like sun, moon, and, and rising signs. And it was like, oh my God, it's so much more than that. And each one of us having this um, map of our lives and uh, the ability to kind of um, use it for guidance. Uh, it, it's really a shame that not many people use it and more people are uh, thrown off by it being juju and, and crap. Because it's actually uh, like everything is written in the stars. Well, you know, and and I, I agree with you. And the reason the reason for that, I would have been in the seat um, of complete skepticism. Um, I, you know, they, it's kind of like buying blankets from the side of the road that have wolves on them. Those mm. are they're, they're not good for the selling point. You know, with uh, with astrology and things like that. There's there's a grouping of the way that society looks at people in the astrology field or, you know, that understanding, they tend to put them in that juju field, like I think you just called it, mm -hmm. um, or that area. But in all honesty, we've been studying astrology longer than any other stinking religion. We've been doing, we've been doing the math. It's, it's all over the place. It's a grid. It's a network. It's, it's points on a graph and people don't, uh, people, people, I'm not going to insult the people. I will say that people have been given a cognitive bias by whomever, whether it be governmental, marketing, social media, whatever it might be that puts them in that position has led them to believe that the words to describe the things that you're saying are juju or right. hokum or a conspiracy or something like that. Nobody's mm -hmm. taken the time to look at the fact that it's simply saying what every else, everybody, every other religion is saying. Mm -hmm. It all says it. It's already determined. Right. But however, that being said, uh, a lot of people think that because it's determined that they don't have a choice, which is absolute false. I, you know, there is this and it, they call it the free will project, you know, just like they're, you know, they what I mean by they is there's a group of humans that believe that there is a 
collective of consciousness, uh, spirit, if you will, that are guiding us. And maybe it's uh, the law of one. Maybe it, I don't know how much research that you've done, but I'm just bring, throwing out some stuff here. No, very, it very, very surface. You, yeah, it doesn't really matter probably what done a lot you've more. researched. It doesn't really matter what you've researched. It, it's more about what feels right to you. And that's going to change too. But regardless, it's, it's free will. And what you choose to believe is ultimately your choice. And, and it's like going to a pharmacy and people using like Tylenol, for instance, for the same ailment and it not working for everyone the same way. And, and that does that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, and I think one of the things I have to remember is that the uh, the pills, so to speak, in this case, come from big pharma and our understanding of that medication. It comes from all those plugins. And we're not just talking about uh, societal inputs. We're talking about genetic and hereditary inputs that, that happen over such a long period of time that create these mindsets um, mm -hmm. where, where you can't, you can't free think. You can't see that, you know, the feelings that you have, see the feelings. How does that work? Um, feel the, <laughs> <laughs> see the feelings. That is my new, uh, my new song. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> So you, you're not allowed within society to actually break down those Eastern philosophies that actually show the congruency between religion and what we're discussing right now. So the, everything's been put under an umbrella and, and nobody can see the light. I think that's why the awakening is, is, you know, people are choosing now to awaken because there's that certain appeal to um, don't do it. You know, it's it's the reverse psychology. They're going to be people that push the, the envelope. They're going to be people that say, oh, we're not allowed, but we're going to do it anyway. Because why? Because it feels right. And because it's time. And because if we all stand up, then maybe the, the structure will fall. So would you say that that's just a shift in the entire paradigm? Absolutely. I, I'm I, From my perspective, um, over the last four years, I would say that um, I've felt a calling. Um, something mm -hmm. I've, I've always had that drive in life, um, something bigger than myself, something I'm supposed to be doing. Something's not right with what I'm doing every day. And what I, what I came to figure out was that I was doing anything and everything not to be me mm -hmm. because it was in effect, my defense mechanism to keep from getting attacked by society around mm -hmm. me, because that was how I kept my rank. In, you know, the overall scheme of things. And in order to uh, break that, you have to you have to break your mind. Yes. You literally absolutely. have to break your mind. It's it, true. People don't realize it. it is. You have like if issues were crap and you and your head, you know, or and you had a sack and you walked through life, every issue that you picked up, which was shit, you dropped in the sack and you carried it. You have to carry them because you didn't complete them. So what happens 30, 40 years later? You're not carrying your dog's crap. You're carrying like a giant parachute full of garbage that you've never gone through. And guess what? The only way you get through those is to fucking do it. You have to literally get on your knees and finish mom's death. Finish the time I got bullied. Finish. You have to make peace with that and realize that it doesn't mean shit, that it was all input. What's, I think that's what's so uh, important about the, the, it's like this new concept, but it's really not. It's so old of being mindful and staying present because when you are mindful and present, then you're allowed to process all of the emotions, emotion, energy in motion, right? So what happens is people will go through their whole lives. And usually around 30 or 40, they'll start to feel the pressure. Like, I haven't done shit with my life. I haven't done what I feel is right. This doesn't resonate with me and who I feel that I am because I'm always doing what everyone else wants me to do. My parents think I'm really good at this. Um, I, you know, I went to school for this. I really don't like it, but I'm going to do it anyway because I went to school for it and I'm still paying off the loan. And then your body starts to hurt and you have all of these ailments. And it's because your body's like, nope, sorry, this isn't working for me anymore. So people subconsciously, are hurting themselves with what they eat, with not working out, or at least going for a walk and enjoying nature, because that's important too, uh, with not, uh, you know, having an animal in the home and not giving it that the love and care that it needs, because everyone has that. I mean, it's kind of crap. My dog, my dog is a lifesaver. She's sitting exactly. right beside me right now. Riley's always in the studio. Therapy, right? Dogs are therapy. But people have all these things around them that have been, been built over time and subconsciously they finally break whether it's you know you hurt your back or 
maybe it's your digestive system, which usually, I mean, America being uh, prominently obese uh, with a lot of uh, acid reflux issues, um, we're talking about candida overgrowth and the inability to process uh, proteins and gluten. A lot of people going veganism or vegan gluten free, which I've done. Um, and it doesn't have to be permanent. Um, I'm starting to eat other things that I wasn't able to eat over the, the course of five years, but et cetera. You know, the healing takes place whether you want it to or not when it comes to a, a grand scale, a micro, no, excuse me, a macrocosm of energetic work. We, we have to process the trauma before we can move forward as 100%, 100%. You know, that's as individuals and as a globe. Uh, you know, it's when we look at the humanity as a whole, we fail to realize that we are one unit because all of us impact the other. And when we stay within our own ranks and start killing and hurting each other, the definition of that and any other organism is what cancer, right? When you feed yeah. upon yourself and that's what we're doing as a whole. We're just eating ourselves internally as a large organism and as a smaller organism, you know, and like you were explaining that it, that's what I, that analogy of the, uh, the sack of shit is, is, once you've got so many of those things built up, you literally have something that smells so horrible, but that's, you know, it's all metaphorical. It's, it's what's in your head. It's all those anxieties, depressions, um, OCD, any of those things, people fail to realize that that's actually your brain screaming because it's trapped in a false cage. Yeah. What's even worse is that people will actually claim it like my depression, my anxiety, when it's not even yours, really. Uh, my back pain, this, that, no, you are meant to maybe go through it, experience it and appreciate it and then let it go. But it's not yours. It is something that happens to you. Are you talking about those people that claim victimization as their persona? They don't um, even know that they're doing it. They don't it. know it. No, they, they absolutely do not know it. And they do not know it's a choice. Right. That's, that's all part of the conditioning. But yes. We have a mind and we think that the mind serves us well. And it did. But it doesn't serve us worth a shit now. It actually hinders us over and over again. It's a defense mechanism. All it does is sit up there and try to protect you. So, unfortunately, we're not being chased by saber-toothed tigers and fucking other shit anymore. We're being chased by social media and deep fake memes and other horrible things that make you feel, you know, exposed again. And instead of uh, our mind letting us realize that none of those things have any impact on us, we allow it to just torture the living shit out of us. Might as well just have like an egg beater and an open head. <laughs> yeah, the funny nice thing is about that. We're, yeah, exactly. We're going back to the the whole idea of the free will experiment and how I, I'm call not it an sure. experiment. How do you mm -hmm. what what do you mean by the free will experiment? Well, the way I see things is that we're all kind of a human experience experiment we're, we're here for the human experience but we agreed to the experiment spiritually you're uh, referring to correct right i mean if you want to call it spiritual um uh, uh, some people will feel that it is more than spiritual it is it is uh dna yeah like it, it, in, it really is what we are you know it's my shirt has today is like exactly. a form of the tree of life it is <laughs> it is a dna strand going into the tree of life and for me what I've what I've tried to what I've figured out my own interpretation is that if you were to look down upon all of the religions that we Abrahamic, all of the astrological, all of the uh, the different viewpoints that point to whatever all of this actually is, what is this? You know, what is God? What is you know the nature of all of this? And all I've come to conclude at this point is if it, it would be the same as looking down on a large, uh, like I was looking at a large pizza from the top down and every slice was a religion or a viewpoint on what is God. And God was that damn little white table sitting in the middle to protect us from getting squashed by the box. <laughs> Everybody's Actually, that's, got it right. You're right. But it's funny that that you should bring that up because I have my own theory and not everyone does, right? So Jesus, right, the fisher of men, sent all of these disciples in many different directions to collect, you know, the minds of men. And I believe that when that happened, that 
if it happened. <laughs> that that's exactly what you're explaining here is that there are so many different sects of religion and it's basically just a tool to make sure that we all keep our morals in line. <laughs> it's a, I, I, I don't I don't battle religion, especially on the show, but mm -hmm. it's an easy stretch for me to put Jesus in the shoes of a prophet with an understanding of the awakening process through meditation and prayer. And he came to discover that everything that we take upon ourselves is actually a choice and it's a form of madness. He's got a whole bunch of people hanging around there that don't know how to read. None of them. Let's, let's face it. We haven't been able to read until like the 60s globally, right? The majority of the population. So what do you do? You come up with some good tenants. Yo, stop fucking with each other. Don't <laughs> screw your buddy's wife. You know, uh. don't do all these things and just be. Sounds like he's telling us not to buy into the mind, which I don't know, seems like to me that could be called the devil, um, if you want to go metaphorical. But my understanding is this guy had an understanding that we're suffering from that mental condition that is the human experience in the first stage of it. And he's like, yo, check it out. You don't have to do that anymore. Just be cool to each other and then we'll all get through this. You know, you're absolutely right, but I'm going to put a little spin on this. See, there's so many, there are so many. Exactly. So many prophets, right? But each one of them are, you know, black and white. There are even gray zones, right? So you've got Solomon, you've got um, Thoth, uh, you've got Buddha, right? Just to throw some names out there. Absolutely. And that's sausage, pepperoni, and mushroom. Right. <laughs> A little bit of basil. Yes. Um, that's those are the pineapple. slices of pizza. Yes. Pineapple is a must. Just kidding. Some people don't like it. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm going to pass. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really matter what you have on your pizza. What matters is that you enjoy it. You know, and that's what people just, they, they're they seeming to forget uh, because of all the programming is that there, there can be a neutral point. There can be a way to float through life, but you have to pay attention and be cognizant, be aware that of what's happening right now and be aware of your thoughts. And being 30 that's years hard. old, exactly. Being 30 years old and coming into an awakening is like WTF, capital, exclamation point. Mm -hmm. And because we have all the programming and trying to break it down and then trying to see life for what it really truly is and then manifesting because everyone wants to do that nowadays. It's like, I want to manifest the heck <laughs> out of everything, right? I can't even open up YouTube without getting sold like how to make my wealth through some kind of existential process. I kind mm -hmm. of, I, I have real problems thinking that somebody wants to give me their knowledge that is such peaceful, you know, ways of obtaining all of this life-changing information for $59.95 a month for the mm -hmm. next 12 months. I'm like, that doesn't mm -hmm. sound very enlightened to me. I get that you got to support yourself, but it gets ridiculous, man. They tell you you can manifest a Lamborghini and then, you know, your dream whoever and all these different things, and that's a crock of shit. I watched a movie last night, actually, um, called Love Happens, a uh, Jennifer Aniston flick, and it's it's funny that, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer that there's no coincidence. Everything happens right when it needs to. So I'm watching this movie and it's basically about a guy that writes a book and uh, it's because his, his wife dies. And a lot of the story was changed to fit this dynamic of uh, self-help. Uh, it You know, he's an author. He wants to help people get through grief and loss. And he's going to hotels in different cities and he's preaching, right? But at the end of the movie, you come to find out that he there's a lot that he leaves out. He hasn't processed his own grief. You know, it's where am I going with this? <laughs> it's one of those things where these people that are selling all of this crap, how do you know that it's actually still working for them? You know, when, when it starts to not work for them anymore because they don't have as many people that are interested and they have to, you know, push the push themselves to the next level and the next level and the next level. What's working for them right now? Does it still work the way it used to in we the beginning? We will never know. We'll never know because you don't show that part. No, There's they don't. a natural balance to everything. Everything's a whole. And if you're going out there and you're manifesting Lamborghinis, you're going to get kicked in the nuts later for it. It just <laughs> yeah. is how it works. You get your Lamborghini, but you're going to get a kick in the sack next year. You just don't right. realize it. It's all a balance. Right. But people don't realize also that part of the journey is learning how to be integritous and authentic. Very much so. Authenticity is like my platform. Everybody that listens to the show, they want to punch me for saying authenticity. But that's honestly how I figured out uh, or where 
where I landed after my the the start of my journey was that I everything comes back to the beginning. It's so funny that we're born one way and we're authentic in that moment as children. We're running around and then we get all these mind, genetic, hereditary, social inputs that come in from our first set of gods, our parents. And, mm. you know, which is none, due to no fault of theirs, you get all of this information and then you run awry. It's like you're implanted with everything that's not you because you're socially painted into a corner of what is going to keep me safe. Is it playing piano? Is this what people praise me for the most? Is it mm -hmm. being the speech guy? Is it doing, you know, coding? Is it whatever it is, right? Where's that money, money, companion, and life combination? How can I get it? Where can I roll those dice? And oh, yeah. you're talking about that, uh, you know, you have that, that 30, 40 year, year old existential crisis or, you know, midlife crisis is actually what it is. Um, you, you get to that. And then all of a sudden you're screaming, I want to do everything I wanted to do when I was a kid. And I'm so mad that I didn't do all the stuff that I wanted to do as a kid. And I'm standing here wondering why I didn't do it when I was a kid. And the fact of the matter was, is you did everything not to be who you wanted to be. You actively destroyed your own life. You played a hand in it the whole entire way, but you're supposed to be that person at the end. That's why it's the human experience. What's really cool about what you just said is that there are a set of very subconscious abilities that each one of us has been growing since we've been children in the background, even though we've been doing what we don't necessarily want to do. Um, you know, with trauma comes a very special set of whatever it is you did to be able to cope and make your way through it, which makes us, you know, intuitive and empathic and using those special talents and gifts to to make our way forward. And with the awakening and or should I call it a midlife crisis, um, there's the opportunity to see through everything that we've gone through and kind of dismantle this um, era of disappointment, the uh, industrial revolution, and turn it into something that is, is more powerful uh, moving forward for our minds, it mind, body, its spirit. Purpose. It served right, it its did. purpose. It absolutely did. You described the machine. A lot of people don't, I didn't recognize it for what it was. And I think that does come with what you just said, retrospect, time, and experience, and things like that. But I look back on it and industrial revolution is, it's required. It's required to be here, but mm -hmm. it's not required anymore. The manufacturing process needs to come to an end. People don't take into account that we were conditioned to give away eight hours of our life via school, not via work. Dude, you want people to sit and make widgets for eight hours? It's real <laughs> simple. You go teach them to make widgets for eight hours and yell at them for not sitting still as children. Eventually, they're going to show up and be your widget makers for eight hours. That's all it is. And it even separates the white collar from the blue collar. Yo, you graduated and went to college? You're up here. You didn't? You're down here. You've got to do manual labor. You will take care of the ones over here. It's a machine. We don't we don't pay attention to what's going on to us. We're actually you 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 bring up mindfulness and that's I think this is where it all starts. It's gratitude and mindfulness. You have to right. find what's going on around you. People are just they're playing a role. They're not Right. You got people from different backgrounds going to the same high school for instance. You know, you've got one person from a very wealthy family that um, can either be, you know, your star quarterback or uh, just your drug dealer, right? from the same type of background, right? Or you've got someone from a broken home, single parent family, who is, you know, your, your head cheerleader and absolutely ends up in an amazing job of maybe being a TED Talk person, gone through many different type of supervisory positions because she had to work her whole life and she's, you know, an, an executive now. But like I said, it's a social experiment and it's free will. Where do we get it from? It's programming. But the, like you said, the industrial revolution had to happen in order for us to get this first elevate. set of collective consciousness. The right. internet is the first level of rickety ass collective consciousness. It's put together with hangers, tin foil, wires all over the place. But it's our own attempt at bringing our mind back together. 
Absolutely. And it's got to start just, somewhere. Yeah, that's what I figure it is. If I wanted to get everybody together, the first thing I would do, it's like kids with strings and cups back in like the 50s, you know? You, mm -hmm. you tried to talk to your friends somehow and you had to get a connection. Well, guess what? We went to phones. Phones was our first attempt. Now, we're, or, you know, first it was writing, then it was phones, then it's, you know, now it's the internet. We're just trying to connect to each other mentally to break down the walls. Right. Just like any tried and true, uh, we're going to have hiccups, you know, and what do you mean with the whole like deep fake memes and all every, we've got to really practice our decipherability, you know, clarity. Discernment. Yes. You need that discernment. You have to be able to see what is what is real and what is not. And yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> people don't realize is that it's 99.9% .9 not. Mm -hmm. It's it's all programmed. Hello academics and welcome to the study hall. My name is Carl and guess what guys, I found my chair. My chair actually has wheels. So somebody rolled it out into the parking lot and I rolled it back. Sharon Green is a Reiki practitioner. She owns a business called Reiki Paranormal Awakenings LLC. She also has a vlog on YouTube. To see her vlog, go to youtube.com and type in Wanderer Seeker. W-A-N-D-E-R-E-R-S-E-E-K-E-R. -E 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 okay, you have your assignment. One of the things that I read in your, uh, your bio was that um, you said you prefaced it with something, which I, you said there's a twist. You're a twin flame. <laughs> What explain what a twin flame is? Uh, I'll explain what twin flame means to me, and Perfect. I'll also let you know what it means to the rest of the world. Um, so, twin flame to me is an also it's also an experiment. It is an experiment for people to um, who come from uh, maybe a traumatic background to be able to sit with themselves and become a whole human being, uh, someone who is ready to serve the collective consciousness by way of being a whole human being and not being a codependent. Um, and a codependent could be in relationships or just with self, you know, escapism, uh, addictions. But it's it's a way to heal. That's what it is to me. Um, and because of who I am connected to, I won't mention names, but he's a celebrity. Um, I've, I saw his face when I was 13 years old, didn't know who he was. I was on an airplane between Seoul, Korea and Seattle, Washington. My father was in the military, so we traveled a lot. Um, and, you know, heartbreak. So I'm asking the universe all of these questions and I'm getting visuals, you know, because I'm an intuitive empath with psychic abilities, right? That's what I believe. It's it's worked for me my whole life, so I'm not going to change it now. Hey, rock on with your bad self. It's, <laughs> who am I to judge anybody's perspective on the human experience? It, there's no right. way. I can't. I don't know what's going on behind your eyes. Well, the funny thing is, is that a lot of people have these abilities. They're just not focused on them. So uh, the twist, the uh, perspective of um, the collective, a lot of people will believe that um, the twin flame experiment is is exactly what I said it was um, because they've been on it long enough to do the, the healing, sit with mm -hmm. themselves, you know. Um, a lot of people who are maybe two years into it, maybe two, three years into it will believe still that there is some everything outside of themselves or this other person in the world that will complete them. Because we, when you look at Tale as Old as Time, it's a love story, but people see it as two coming together as one. <laughs> Within the body, you've got the divine masculine and the divine feminine, the yin and the yang, right? And it's a balancing act. But people always think that it's outside of themselves. The true love story starts to happen when you start to, taking better care of your vessel and therefore, um, it ruminates, it, it extends into family, into community, and into what you feel that you're meant to be here for, really taking care of the self. Um, but there, because of how many people are stuck in trauma and not willing to sit with their shit, you know, get, get familiar with the consistency of it, the smell of it. Realize and recognize your traumas and your triggers it's you know? it's something that we all have to do. We have exactly. to get in there and just get rid of it. You can't, you cannot move forward with your feet stuck in shit. Exactly. Dude, it's... you can't walk across the carpet of life if you got fucking shit on your shoes. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, a, a lot of, 
a lot of codependent folk out there that are still trying to find their perfect mate. And that's that's what I was looking for when I was 13. I don't know why at that age I was still looking. Uh, because at, you're human? You know, well, maybe, yeah. And hormones. You know, yeah, I was about to say, I, I, every reason possible was why you were doing that. <laughs> right? Like nature. And we all We all do. I mean... Every every person across every religion, across every ethnic background that I've talked to about it, because I, I tend to draw these people to me for some reason, uh, maybe because I, I spoke it in, into existence, because that's a thing. Um, you also think about it all the time. Well, yeah, it thought, is. Thought controls more than anybody gives it credit for. It's been proven in quantum mechanics and quantum physics now. It's it's literally sitting beside things like tarot and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And they're like, oh, hey, check this out. You mean that what we think actually does have an impact on the outcome of things? Mm -hmm. And what we say does, too. They wouldn't call it spells for, for no reason. I heard something recently. I don't know. I'm kind of curious on your thoughts behind this. Um, I think it probably social media because we get so much stuff crammed in our head now. Mm -hmm. But this made a lot of sense to me. I tend to run a dialogue. My brain is a dialogue. Um, I suffer from something. I suffer. I tend, my way of processing information is different from other people. And I did not know that until the last couple of years. Um, I dream just like everybody else, mm -hmm. um, good, bad, and different nightmares, whatnot. Um, but I don't think with pictures, I've never been able to, um, it's called a Fantasia. So whenever mm -hmm. somebody would say, imagine this tree or the beach or the apple, I thought you assholes were all being metaphorical. I didn't know you actually have like a whole screen in your head. That's super <laughs> cool. You guys <laughs> literally get to see the apple. I've never seen the stinking apple. I didn't know it existed. I just thought you guys were like, Oh, Hey, it's an apple. And I just sat there like, you know, the unimaginative kid I was not realizing, you know, that you guys, people think differently. Some people think on like a ticker tape. Some people see images. Some people hear a running dialogue in their head. And one of the things that I saw the other day was that if you're, i.e. when you're not being mindful, one of those racing moments, whether no matter how your how your brain processes it, it, it said to check your tongue and see if it's on the roof of your mouth. Oh, and and I was like, huh? Well, yes, it is. And the theory behind it is that when your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth, you're having reinforced conversations with your brain through micro movements in your tongue when you're running that dialogue. Beautiful. And I, I sat like there it. and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I, that's me. <laughs> like, and, and now I'm walking around like I can hear myself. Pulling my tongue off the roof of my mouth. Because <laughs> I'm like, I gotta, I gotta turn the page. This isn't working out. <laughs> it's probably just a mindful technique, but whatever. It made so much sense to me. Oh, yeah. It does make a lot of sense. It's, man, psychology, science, all the tests that people have gone through just to figure this stuff out. It's interesting. It's really mind blowing. We want so much explanation. We need so much explanation. We're so tired of what we've got here that we need magic and we need all sorts of crazy shit to go on in front of us. Why? Yeah. Why? Why is it that we're only amazed by things once? Yeah. Yeah. I sat at Disney one day or I didn't sit at Disney. I, I was, I went to Disney. I turned around and I looked at all the people coming in from behind me and they all had, I mean, Dude, it was, it was amazing. Their eyes looked like saucers. Their mouths were all wide ass open. And they're just looking around like chickens walking through the yard, like head popping every direction. Like, what is wrong with them? But then you see that group of pass holders and they didn't give two shits. They ran right by it. It was not their thing anymore. You know, it, it, we or like when you see those people put on those glasses um, that are colorblind, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You see a colorblind person throw on those glasses. They, they they have like they have like a coming to Jesus moment mm -hmm. at how amazing everything is. And we don't give two fucks about what color something is. Yeah. I have a favorite color, you know, whatever that might be, but doesn't mean anything. Dude, we're not we're not gracious or we're not what's the word? We express no gratitude for what we actually have in front of us. That mind has blocked so much shit. That we don't even know that a fucking sunset's the most amazing thing you could possibly see. Yeah. Yeah. Just try taking a walk through a park without your headphones on. Without your cell phone taking pictures. Yeah, exactly. It's called, yeah, it's a different kind of immediate gratification. And it's only needed in that moment. We keep holding on to what was great, what was great, what was great, what was great. 
And we're doing two things where we're, we're putting great on a pedestal. And then we're also setting ourselves up for failure in the future because you ain't going to get all greats. It just doesn't happen that way. It's that balance yin and yang. It actually has to happen that way for there to be a whole and it just doesn't work. And that's why alcoholism and that's why drug addiction. And that's why so many people are in jail. I've struggled with it. You can't, it, it, it breaks my heart when I see humanity enslaving itself for its own inputs like it creates its own internal prison system to keep it away from for for the inputs that are due to no fault of their own Dude, if you grow up with a crackhead mother selling you know or a crackhead dad and people selling crack and you're only around crack and you do all these things, how the fuck are you not going to come out on crack you know, mm -hmm. you're going to come out that way. And then instead of treating it like a situation where somebody comes from, you know, a completely horrifying, sad scenario that we've created as a society due to all these other things and try to help them. I don't give a fuck if they stole a TV. What the hell's a TV? That's something to distract you from the fact that you're going to die one day. That's all it is. Why don't we just look at people like humans? Sorry, I ranted a little bit there. No, it's okay. It, it's funny because when you bring up these points, it's like, I, I don't know where the connection is, or maybe it's because I grew up on Disney, right? Because we, we all have these alternative films playing in the back of our minds, right? And so I'm thinking about movies where I've seen people turn their lives around, and I'm 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 kind of wondering Hollywood has a huge role in a lot of our lives. Um, you know, Hollywood, Bollywood, wherever it comes from, it's still media. It's still uh, some kind of of guidance or whatever you want to call it. And comes with great responsibility. It really does. And they don't they don't see the other part of the story or maybe they do see the part of the story. But the only one that they want to show is that one person that pulled themselves up by their bootstraps because they found a mentor or a way out. Yeah, I, I you, get you... I get pegged with that. I get pegged with I pulled up my bootstraps. I did these things. This is how you got where you were. Other people can do that, too. And I think it's a load of shit. I think that I got a whole bunch of good left and right turns and then a whole lot of shit that none of you have ever seen. I don't, why am I? I'm not going to wear my shame. I'm not going to go around and walk around and say, look at all the shit that I've felt or endured or look at all the shit that I've done. Right. Because you don't come out of different situations with, you know, the best moral compass in life or the capabilities to make the decisions. You just can't. You can't do what you don't know. And I, I firmly believe that we have to have compassion for people coming out of those situations. And if they're stuck on repeat, dude, we run around with one of the best quotes. You know, if we do something over and over again, that's insanity. Well, if somebody keeps stealing shit over and over again, expecting a different outcome, what is that? Yeah. It's insanity. Well, hey, we'll just put you in a box. That's the way to go. Put you in timeout. We'll ignore right. you because why? We don't want to look at what is worse off than us. What is worse off than us means that we have to be grateful for who the fuck we are and we can't be a victim anymore like you said earlier. Can't be a victim when you're grateful for who you are or when you're looking at somebody else in a worse situation. So what do you do? You throw it in a box. Close the door, you walk away. Fucking humans. <laughs> it would be really great if they took some of this new technology and uh, started really just pushing it into the public for free. Uh, like some of these, uh, the, the new, well, actually some of it, a lot of it is like binaural beats. Um, binaural, people don't, binaural beats are amazing. Right. They, it's they a really very are. passive way of building new neural pathways. But when people need extra help in building those pathways and, and a lot of people like me, I'm a, I'm a very, you know, right now type of person um want all the gratification right now um but even then i've, I've learned how to really ex appreciate the delayed gratification in my own healing process um but there are you know like cognitive behavioral therapy techniques that um are available now for people who have uh, like state benefits um I believe that a lot of our prison systems are offering cognitive behavioral therapy as well as uh, NLP, neuro linguistic programming. Pandemic um, hurt so many people, but thank God for the push to the mental health crisis to be able absolutely. to give people the chance to seek help. Mm -hmm. And then with that help, find out that there's 
actually other ways to address these things like meditation. I, I, I say it every fucking episode. I've been meditating for a couple of years and I haven't missed a day. And I'm going to continue to do it because just like you said earlier, those neural pathways change. Um, mm. It's kind of like, you remember the Etch-A-Sketch? Oh, yeah. Right? I feel like my mind is the the toddler with the two dials the first time. And everything is like all zigzagged and doesn't make sense. It's just this plethora of shit. And then once you start meditating, it's like shaking the Etch-A-Sketch. And suddenly you're like fucking Picasso. And you're doing that, you know, those those intricate designs that you see on like TikTok or whatever, where some dude sat there for 50 hours and did it. It's it's a completely different experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's an, that's a good acid trip. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. I mean, uh, the plant medicine is oh, yes. is. So the earth has been telling us to evolve for how long? Yes. It grows marijuana, mushrooms, ayahuasca, all these other things. And every single one of them do exactly what we just described. It's got to love a good shaman. Dude. Got to love a good shaman. You know, uh, they're the, the scientists before science. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's part of my healing journey was, uh, plant-based medicine. I was on a handful of, uh, prescription meds every day. 2017, mm-hmm. I took my last pill and I, I've been taking, I, thank you. Um, I've been a uh, novice herbalist uh, for the last five years-ish. I'm just kind of intuitively guided to uh, use different herbs um, for whatever it is that ails me. Uh, and a lot of people, they research a lot of different things that you can do online with food. But it, honestly, your body doesn't need much to do the things that you need to do during the day. I mean, especially if you're just sitting on your butt. If you, you want to get technical, you can damn near survive off of breath alone, but that scares the shit out of people when you tell them that. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's it's yogic and it really does. There's people that have lived without food for fucking tons of time on air mm-hmm. in India. And I, mm-hmm. I know that people are like, oh, he's fucking right. he's nuts. No, it's, it's pretty well true. I mean, we're all only what, two or three minutes from death anyway with a breath reset? Mm-hmm. How else can we, you, we can only survive off of that anyway. Right. But they're they're just better at it because they don't necessarily have all the trauma that we do. (laughs) They're not wasting. uh, Dude, overeating is just as much an energy offset as anything else. Everybody thinks it's supposed to be some law, you know, like there's particles coming in and out of you. Guess what? When you stick your hand to your hole with a fucking Twinkie, that's energy. You're doing the same thing. You're upset because somebody yelled at you and now you've got a Twinkie in your pocket. Oh, yeah. And there's a reason for it. It's still energy. We think that we're independent of everything going on around us. No, no. Stress eating is the worst. And then, you know, the karma that comes from that. It's like, oh, no one's watching me eat, but they're going to see it on my ass in a couple of weeks. Dude, how stupid is that? Like, literally to care what your ass is going to look like in a week. Mm. Oh, how yeah. is that occupying my day to day? While I'm trying to look at, you know, the sunshine or work on something else or hang out with a kid or whatever it might be. What's my ass going to look like in a week? That doesn't really matter, does it? No, it doesn't. Because it's not going to look like you think it's going to look unless you're fucking Nostradamus. Nobody gets that shit right. Nobody. Mm. We worry. Oh, sorry. No, 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 please. Um, The people that actually push themselves to change their bodies, to morph their bodies into what they think that they feel better as or look better as, that's that's a whole different animal Mm. right there. It's, you know, you can... That's an industry. It is. It's a huge industry, and it's really sad because that's that many people that feel shitty about themselves. I didn't realize it. I had no idea. I chased all the fads. I wore... Dude, I did... I've dug septic fields. I've begged for change, and I've also been working for the largest consulting firm in the world as an architect for financial designs and stuff like that. Um, I've lived internationally and worked those jobs. They all suck. It doesn't... You you, you, you feel like you need these things, right? and there's no such thing as a material need outside of food or shelter (laughs) and things like that. Love. Imagine if you took a love. Exactly. Imagine if you took a calculator and you walked around here and everybody, you know, adds up what things cost. You know, like, all right, my house, everything is worth this. What if you stood in front of your house with a calculator and you measured it in minutes? If you (laughs) took those, you took every one of the items, the picture on the wall, this nice picture, how many hours of this, Free time, this God-given time that you have, did you exchange for that? Keep going. Start measuring it. And eventually you're going to think, what did I do? That's not a fair trade. 30 years is not a fair trade. No, it's not. Especially when you don't know if you have tomorrow. Right. I I just posted uh, something on my social media 
it uh, that kind of just describes what you just said. Um, it says, uh, I don't have a retirement plan. I don't have my own apartment. I live with my parents. I'm single. I'm, I'm a single woman in my 40s. I have issues. I have pains. Small bullets below are I'm building a life for myself. I enjoy living with good people. Uh, and, and this one's I live with my parents, but I see the above. Plus, we love each other. Bonus. Uh, sure, it's lonely at times, but I have a dog. <laughs> Everyone does what, uh, or excuse me, everyone does have issues, but I'm choosing to heal. Everyone has pain, but it's a sign of growth and opportunities to heal. It, basically, people don't really, they put everything in this little box of supposed to, and they don't really mm -hmm. take a minute to realize what they're grateful for. If you took a, a second out of every day to write down five things that you're grateful for, and uh, this is proven, then it improves your life exponentially building those new neural pathways um time yeah time it it's worth a lot but when you're not spending it doing the things that you're passionate about but it, even then it takes a minute to kind of ego death out of that you got to ego death out of what you're supposed to you got to step outside that little box of supposed for to. those that don't understand um what what is ego death so it's a bastardized ego, term right it is it's a it's a highly overused term uh, that a lot of people so will, is woke kind of contort yes uh so to me ego death uh explains about the different parts of the ego you've got the uh, everyone's got a light and a dark side right the ego death is the gray everybody the everybody thinks about punting the baby on the plane they don't do it <laughs> but that screaming baby it did cross their mind i don't care if you're a nun for at least for a moment you're like internally <laughs> but the difference is, is you don't punt the baby right it's the, so, it's the baby punters the ego death is coming to realize that you don't have to live a life of supposed to by anyone else's terms or by your own so the good part of the ego is i'm good at this i enjoy this this is something that i am willing to thrive at um and, and some people uh would equate that with um people that are just really overly egotistical. And yes, there is an overly egotistical part of that, which a lot of people, um, they can't decipher the admirable points of the ego, the authenticity and the integrity part of the ego. Instead, it's, damn, I look good. I've, I'm insta-famous. Um, See, that's I, vanity. There's a, it is. there's a distinct difference. It is, exactly. But then there's the other part of the ego that says, I'm, I'm not good enough. I can't do this without uh, validation, you know, and a lot of validation issues come from narcissist parents. But it's that gray area where you're, you're like, okay, I can take calculated risks. I can let those parts of me die and move forward and have a side hustle while I'm working on my main hustle, you know, and finding my place in this world where I truly fit, even though I'm not going to have much of an, uh, a nest egg, because that's not important right now. It's not important in the slightest. I know that no. it is to, not to, in the slightest, to a certain degree, you have to be intelligent to, enough to maintain yourself in what our society has created as its way to survive. You have be to be nice. Yeah. yeah. Just be, be nice. Cool. Give back to society. Donate where you can, uh, you know. You, you showed um, that when you described the ego, um, you brought up a great point because I think everybody considers the ego just to be that machismo, whatever, you know, Vanity, walk yeah. around. Yeah. And then that's the, he's got a, he's got an ego or, you know, she's just egotistical, you know, or something like that. That's not what it means. It, it I, I don't know the exact definition. I'll screw it up because I've got hit in the head too many times, but I'm telling you, it's something along the lines of persona, mm. right? And it mm -hmm. means what you Oh my God, I just, did I just like become like a Yenta? Like, <laughs> like what was that? <laughs> I don't even know what, what sound that was. Um, I, I forgot where I was even, what were we even talking about? <laughs> ego. Okay. We were talking yeah, about so the ego and persona. You show, the, you show the other side of it and people have, um, they don't, what we don't pay attention to is that it is exactly what you said. It's a yin and a yang. The ego doesn't exist in just that boisterous manner where it's overconfident and all these types of things. It exists in the antithesis and in just such a, you know, to the, to the degree that you might as well be looking at Schmeagel. For every, for every big buff, whoever it is that you see standing in front of you, 
there's inside is the shriveled up smallest pain most painfully stricken human that you could ever imagine because to work day and night to change your physical attributes to is to impress society or to drag in a mate and all that kind of stuff i don't know maybe you start counting your muscles just like you do the pictures on the wall with time yeah you know it's it's a persona and and with with persona there's it's so much more than your outward appearance it's who we feel that we can be and it's a lot of that conditioning that goes back to childhood and the mother wound and and us being uh having the awakening in our 30s we're having to learn how to parent ourselves and that in its own is a freaking head trip you know it's like <laughs> what am i worth what can i <laughs> worth. right worth what yes. a horrible thing you're coming out the gate in debt to yourself exactly exactly <laughs> but it it there's a that spiritual approach to it that says there's so much more to life. How can I live in the way that feels right for me? I think that um, it starts with removing a mask, right? Oh, absolutely. Masks on the logo and we, we carry them around and, and they have different marks all over them. And for the longest time, we had like a, another sack of masks. You had like your interview mask. You had your I'm going to meet mom mask. You know, I'm going to go hang out with my friends mask. And not only did you have the mask, you had to remember what marks were on it the last time you had it on. Because mm -hmm. if you don't remember the marks, then you're not going to be able to integrate back into whomever you're with. And that's mm -hmm. just a fucking shitty way to live. You're hiding behind all these different things. And instead, just take that one mask and put every scar and accomplishment all over that thing. Dude, just beat it the fuck up and wear it with pride. You know, mm -hmm. and that make that your persona, make that your ego. A lot of people don't know how to tell the difference, especially with social media being the way it is nowadays. It's uh, I took myself off of Twitter and Facebook because of the <laughs> those are a cesspool. You pick the right? two that you should be off of first. Exactly. I mean, I, I was using them for business, but at the same time, it was it was too much. There was the Black Lives Matter, which I I've grown up in an ethnically diverse, you know, you're a military kid. Yes army brat. Um, but it didn't really hit me until stop Asian hate started happening. And, you know, these things have been happening for centuries, but they're just now being so like prominently pushed to the front line. And I appreciate it, but at the same time triggers. Right. So I had to, I had to take a break from it mm -hmm. um, and just kind of delete the, the ego that I was before and recreate myself in a different light. And this person that I'm recreating or putting to the forefront now is the person that I I've realized that I've always been. So there's this full whole, circle. exactly full circle that happened. And it's, it's kind of scary what's going on in social media now, you know, uh, programming aside and the, the false meme, uh, the deep state, dark web, horrible, crazy, you know, but was it ever not there? Uh, no, that's just it. It was just, it wasn't. You know, it, it, was, was it was always there. It was hard copy. It was, it all was hard, hard copy, copy, or it was in a dark room, or it was at the bottom of this area. It was, it was, a, or it was in the recesses of everybody's mind. I think that um, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a good thing that it's being put on display because then so. it has to then it has to withstand the uh, the barrage of of how people perceive it, you know, right. or how they judge it. They're going to look at it on a grand stage. They're going to say, look. We have to address this now. It's, it's George Floyd. Fucking right. hate that. Hate it with all of my heart. I hate it. But the man set things in motion without the intent to set them in motion. And it brought a lot of things that needed to be addressed to the forefront. And without George Floyd, I don't think Asian hate comes up. I don't think, right. you know, that, that it has the same, you know, that we don't find out about Dr. Seuss and his fucking 400 political cartoons drawing Asian people, you know, as like a, 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 a yeah, they had one that he called a Jap in the box. That's mm -hmm. horrible. But again, we have to, I think compassion is the only way we get through this. I think we I look at, so. I think that if you've made those decisions, if you're those people that, that are being described as in those situations, you know who you are. You're clinging for the last hope that you might be right. And it might be acceptable, but it's it's a sinking ship. And if you're on the side that sees them sinking, reach out your hand, let them off the boat. They know that they're fucked up. They just don't want to be slapped on the way in. Let them come in and let them learn a new way. That's all you can do. Or they're just going to 
we're going to drown. That's what they do. If you're going to be that's what that society's negative. led us to. That's yeah. what society's led us to for for eons, you know. And with all of these things coming to the forefront on the, the world stage, I think it's the most important thing is for us to keep an open mind, uh, which has been like the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. To do. I mean, every 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 consciously religious person who's been programmed and and doesn't want to uh, believe in deep state or conspiracy theory. Um, just take a look at what happened at the, the inauguration, the end of Trump season. We thought it was the end of Trump season, but we've got all these people rushing into our government and trying to say that it's false. Well, that happens. Why? How? Because there are seeds planted. These seeds are planted for a reason. You know, we need to we need to see every possibility and then watch how people react to it. All and, there is is possibility. It's infinite. Right. But it's people infinite. don't see it that way. People don't mm. see it that way. They don't see it as a learning experience or uh, that something could possibly be true. You know, I you don't know, side with anyone nope. as far as politics goes. All I know is that everything is an opportunity, an opportunity for expansion, growth, mm. evolution. I love that. I love that. And um, on that note, I think that uh, we've we've been on for about an hour. I think <laughs> I, I I I could keep doing this. In fact, I'd love to have you back. Um, but I would be remiss not to uh, give you a chance to bring up your charity um, before we're done, because you had mentioned a charity before we started that I would love for you to plug. See if we can't get some people to do donate. Um, you want to tell us about it? Yes. So um, I might be giving myself away here, but uh, I believe that. When it comes to trauma and the children that were born into our world with cancer, that um, it it comes from a much deeper place. It it like everything is all energy, right? So, mm -hmm. I believe that these children um, are an extension of their parents, and that trauma can be healed in a lot of ways. But if you can give back in uh, donations to any type of children's cancer foundation. Um, I've been donating to Christopher's Haven for a while. It's based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, they take on families that are going through horrible times, uh, really financially uh, tough times because their children are going through different types of cancer. Definitely a worthy cause. Absolutely. Definitely a worthy cause. And uh, you said one more time, what's the name of the uh, the, the charity? Christopher's Haven. Christopher's Haven. And what we'll do is we'll put a link to Christopher's Haven in the uh, show notes. So if you guys want to go and uh, make a donation, please do. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on, Sharon. This has been such a fun conversation, super enlightening. Um, I think everybody's going to love to hear about your your journey and your perspective. Um, I think it's a thank fresh you. perspective. And I think it's a perspective that people are coming to uh, accept a lot more because it's it it's accepting of them. Mm, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the the chance to blab. <laughs> hey, everything happens for a reason. I'm I'm super excited that that you came on, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you again soon. Yes, please. All right, <laughs> all right, everybody. Remember, be cool and keep learning. Hey, academics! Thanks for attending another class at the Tragedy Academy. You can show us some love by rating us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. On Amazon Alexa, ask to listen to the Tragedy Academy podcast. Please visit our website at thetragedyacademy.com where you'll find past interviews and blogs on our homepage and sign up for our newsletter, Spam with Extra Great. We're on Facebook at The Tragedy Academy Podcast, on Twitter at Tragedy underscore Academy, and on Instagram at The Tragedy Academy 2019, where we'll post recent shows, blog entries, and thoughts. Submit creative work and funny stories to us at our website or on social media. Thanks again for coming to class. And remember, be cool and keep learning. Jay, Eric, please report to detention again. What's up, academics? This is Jay. I'm here to talk to you about Into the AM. This is a clothing and apparel company that I came across last year that has the absolute coolest designs. And the reason why I was attracted to it is because I grew up without a lot of money, like many others, and had to shop on that outlet rack with the irregular items. Things like the fly was over four inches to the left or the right sleeve would be twice the size of the left. It looked like I was growing horizontally. Like, it's okay, honey. You'll grow into your left arm. So you really don't get a chance to express yourself the way that you want to. 
You go into life, you start putting on suits, you start putting on uniforms, and you realize you'd never had a chance to truly express yourself. Enter into the AM, a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they've developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM's passion for change is the driving force behind their brand. They remain committed to creating products that inspire and promote self-expression by partnering with like-minded organizations focused on giving back to communities in need. Last year, they donated 1% of all revenue from their graphic tees collection to the Art of Elysium charity. The Art of Elysium is an artist organization built on the idea that through service, art becomes a catalyst for social change. For over 24 years, the Art of Elysium has paired volunteer artists with communities to support individuals in the midst of difficult emotional life changes. They currently offer 110 community programs per month, serving over 30,000 individuals per year. The only permanent thing in life is change. Supporting charities dedicated to helping those going through these changes, trials, and tribulations require a never-ending commitment. The onus is on us as creators to affect change through our true, authentic talents, and Into the AM is the model of how this is done. Their clothes are handcrafted with care. They have a team of skilled artisans that craft each garment with the highest quality fabrics and eco-friendly inks. Not to mention, these things don't shrink. They don't fade, and they fit as if they were designed supernaturally. I'm stopped every time I wear one of the graphic tees to find out where I got it. The colors attract attention from miles, and the art is nothing short of spectacular, with designs for everyone. One of my personal favorites, Twilight Maiden. Go take a look. Into the AM does all of this while putting their money where their mouth is. 30-day money-back guarantee, lightning-fast shipping, and hassle-free returns. The deals are endless. Graphic tee bundles, discount promo codes, Get over there, check it out. I'm highlighting the tease, but I'd be remiss to not mention that if you want to walk around in the absolute most comfortable shorts, joggers, and basic tees, hit up into the end. I even wear the basics to the gym. Head on over to the tragedyacademy.com, go to our sponsors tab, and follow the affiliate link to the Into the AM store. Help support Into the AM and the Tragedy Academy by purchasing the absolute best apparel and the best designs ever. And remember, academics, be cool and keep learning.